smells. Try to bring your legs out nice and wide. The wrist can go to the inside of your foot. But squeeze up at the top, creating that nice stretch along the back of your legs. Today we're going to be doing um, super sets. Going to be kind of like Tabata Plus. So we're going to go through everything for 30 seconds. You'll get 15 seconds of rest. We're still going to go back and forth between exercises. That's going to be mostly upper body emphasis with cardio. We're going to do two more windows. Then I'm going to bring your feet a little bit closer together. We're just going to come to some squats, keeping your hands in prayer. Focusing on sticking that butt back and then butt squeeze, belly button tight at the top. Awesome. Just like Last four. Three. Two. And then I'm going to place your hands on your hips. We're going to go into some hip openers. Bring your leg up and around to the side. Bring that knee around. And maybe do one more to the outside. We're going to switch directions and go up and in. We're closing the book. We only do this one sometimes. And we're going to go to the other leg. Going up and to the outside. So do a little bit of a popper in the front of that hip. And then we're going to go around to the inside. Getting through that knee, almost like we're still stepping over a hurdle. And then we're going to start to go into some marching, bringing the knee up towards the chest, getting ready for some of that cardio and high intensity movement, focusing on drawing the belly button in as we lift one leg. The tighter you can keep your core, the easier it will be to control your movements. Keep breathing. Last five, four, three, two. And then we're going to go into a jogging place. It's like we're running down the street. Think nice and light in those toes. Awesome. And again, so keeping the core nice and tight. Last five. Three, two, and then jumping jacks. Bring those arms up and around to the sides. Making sure we can slam those arms down at your sides. Start to engage those lats. Awesome. Keep breathing, last 10. Four. Three, two, and side lunges. So bring those legs out nice and wide. Lunge it over to the side. All the way back up, over to the other side. We're going to stretch out those inner thighs, keeping the weight in the heel of the lunging foot. Starting to engage the outer glutes as we press up from that lunge. Last two each way. Two. And we're going to step it in. One leg back for quad stretch. Do our best to keep those knees together, holding your ankles as we pull that heel up towards our butt. Slightly thrusting forward through the hips to get a nice stretch all the way from hip flexor down to knee. Then we're going to drop that leg, switch it over to the other side. Bring that other heel back towards your butt. One side might feel a little bit tighter. You want to try to make it as even as we can. Last awesome. one. And then we're going to do five reverse lines with rotations on each side. So I'm left backwards. Rotate towards that forward bent leg. Come back up to standing. Punch backwards. Rotate towards that forward bent leg. Awesome. Working a little bit on balance. Getting some good core control as we 
rotate, breathing through the chest. Awesome, last two on each side. Awesome, last one here. Perfect, so we're gonna do four inch worms. The first three, we're just gonna crawl it all the way down. Crawl it all the way down to our plank. Hold this for a second. And then slowly crawl it back up. Only have that upper body reaching up to the sky at the top. And crawl it all the way back down. Pulling that belly button in. Perfect. Crawl it back again. Awesome. And on this last one, we're going to stay down in that plane. And then once we're here, we're going to drop down onto your knees. We're going to go into our kneeling hip flexor stretch. So I'm going to bring one leg forward, keep one knee on the ground, then we're going to thrust that hip forward. As we reach our arm up and then lean slightly over to the side. The more you can engage the glute on this side that's down, the more of a stretch you should feel along the front of that hip. Really try to reach up through the ceiling, lengthening through your torso. Then we have you lean back over that heel, straightening out your front leg, pressing that heel to the ground, hip back behind you. And then pull your toes toward your face. Getting a nice stretch along your calves and hamstrings. And then deep breath in here as you bring the chest down towards your knee. And now we bring that leg back to meet the other one. We're going to switch, bring the other leg forward. We're starting in the kneeling position. Thrusting that back hip forward as we reach that arm up and over to the side. Slightly leaning forward into this. Feel a nice stretch along the front of that hip. Then lengthening through the torso as you really try to reach up to the ceiling. And then we're going to sit back over that back heel, straighten out that front leg. Last time in the squat stretch, or half a hamstring stretch, pulling the toes and toward your face, stretching all along the back of the leg. We're doing our best to bring our chest down towards our knees. And one more deep breath in here. Awesome. Okay. Grab water if you need it. We're gonna start with our first set of core exercises. I'm gonna have you go through this two times through. So we're gonna do one set of bird dog, hiking the bird dog as we set up on our hands and knees, reaching opposite knee and opposite foot. Then our second one, we're gonna set up in a high plank. We're gonna go back into our pipe. If you can, we're gonna try reaching for the opposite toe or knee, whatever you can reach. Come back down into your plank, and the other arm reaches back. Right back down. And after we need 30 seconds of both of those, we're going to set back up for bird dog. So we're just going to go through those two twice. Setting this one up in three, two, and so. When bird dog, we want to make sure that we reach out nice and long as we extend the opposite hand and opposite foot out. Inhaling as we reach, and exhaling as we come back down. Making sure that we can still place that hand right over that shoulder. And knee right underneath that hip. Drawing lower abs in. It's really good for working on balance. We start to engage the glutes as we take that leg back. Try one more on each side. Perfect. And then we're going to rest here, set up in that high plank. Once we're in that high plank, make your hands under your shoulders. We're going to push our hips up into that height. Start reaching your opposite hand through your opposite toe. Come right back down into that plank, belly button squeeze in, and reach for that opposite hand, opposite foot. Come right back down into that plank. If the reaching is too much, you can always stay in a plank and just focus on pushing your hips up in that downward dog. And then squeeze 
wiggling belly button in to bring the hips back down. Do what feels right. So if you can try to reach, it's gonna work a lot on that shoulder stability, the upper abs. Start with one more here. And rest. Awesome. We're gonna do one more set of that bird dog, setting up on all fours. Ready? And reach. Opposite arm, opposite hand comes all the way up. And then right back down. Opposite arm, opposite hand. Every time you reach, really lengthening. If we're trying to reach out in front of us, get straight back behind us. Stretching out through the lats. And then taking the glutes. Awesome. Last 10 seconds here. Keep breathing. Inhale and exhale. Three, two, and rest. We have one more set of that plank to plank, setting up in that high plank. Ready? And hips up in the air, reaching for that opposite toe. Right back down. Hips up in the air. Belly button squeeze and hips tuck under as we come down into our plank. Both of them low abs here, especially as we come back down towards the floor. Perfect. Doing it one more on each side. Last three, two, and rest. Woo. You should get your arms and then roll over onto your back. We're going to set up for two ab exercises. We're going to go through back and forth again. First one, we're gonna do our heel crunch. So we just put out our feet underneath our knees. We're gonna lift just the shoulders up and then we're reaching our hands towards our feet as we keep the low back on the ground. So let's set up 30 seconds here in three, two, and lift and reach. This one, we wanna make sure we keep that chin tucked under to help protect our neck and our upper back. Every time we reach for those heels, so exhale, exhale. Awesome, keep breathing, we're already halfway. Last 10. So draw your belly button in towards the spine, working those obliques. And rest, lower your shoulders. Now you keep your knees bent and let the legs fall over to the left hand side. Once they fall over to the left hand side, we're going to put the hands underneath the head and then we're going to crunch up towards the hips and then right back down. So as we crunch up, I want you to imagine that you're bringing your opposite shoulder or your opposite hip. We're going to do 30 seconds on this side and then we'll switch it over to the other side. So we're going to make sure we're keeping those elbows out nice and wide. Little exhale. Every time we come up, We'll have a limited range of motion here. And this will really isolate in those obliques as we crunch up with the side. Make sure we're just supporting the head, not pulling on the neck. Last five. Three, two, and rest. Let those feet come back to the middle. Make sure our spine's neutral, the round like falls to the other side. Same thing on this side. Young little bleeds as we crunch up opposite shoulder towards opposite hips. Inhale as we lower and exhale as we crunch. It's a very small motion. We should start to feel it right in the side, especially as we draw the belly button in as we sit up. Last five. Three. Two. And rest. We're we'll bringing those legs back to the center. And then we have one more set of those heel trenches. Bring the shoulder blades up. And reach. Last 30 seconds here. Making sure we're still drawing that belly button in towards our spine, keeping that low back on the ground. Your abs and your obliques should be starting to burn by now. Just keep breathing. Exhale every time we reach for those heels. Really imagine like you're trying to grab something. Keeping that chin tucked under. Last five, three, two, and rest. Then we have one more set 
the one's oblique crunches on each side. Keeping those legs bent, just let them fall under to the left hand side. Stand foot in the head. Last time, for chin up. Like we're trying to bring the left shoulder up towards the right hip. Exhale, every time you chin up. Really drawing that belly button in. We're almost there. Last five. And rest. And we're gonna let the legs come back to the middle, make sure our spine's nice and straight. Then we're gonna turn over to the right hand side. Last time on this side. Exhale every time we try bringing the right shoulder up towards the left hip. Drawing that belly button in. Really working on those left obliques. Keep breathing. Last 10 seconds here. Keep those elbows out nice and wide. And we got three, two, and rest. Perfect. We're going to stay on your back for this last part. We're going to do two sets of bridges. You may have you keep your legs out really, really wide for this first set. So you're going to keep your toes pointed out. Knees are going to stay pointed out over those toes. Now we're just going to lift up full range of motion. Come all the way back down to the hover. Let's squeeze up to the top. Inhale as we lower. Pull that belly button in nice and tight, especially as we come up to the top. Pressing those arms firmly into the ground. So we're going to do each triceps. Inhale. And then exhale. But feel a subtle stretch along the hip flexors as well. Really start to activate those outer glutes. We've got three. Two. And whenever you keep your hips up as high as you can, we're going to go into our calf raises. So we're just going to raise the heels up, slowly lower down, raise the heels up, and then lower down, keeping those hips nice and still, but clenching to keep them up as high as you can. Imagine you're trying to reach the ceiling with your hips, just working through the calves. Slowly lowering the heels with good control. Last five. Three, two, and then lower your heels. We have one more set of full range of motion bridges, keeping those legs out nice and wide. Lifting all the way up, foot squeeze, and then down to some of her. Exhale on that foot squeeze. Inhale as we lower. So drawing the belly button in, keeping those knees out wide, really working in the outer hips and your hamstrings. So pressing primarily through the heels here. For our last few seconds of full range motion bridges, we got three, two. We keep those hips up as high as you can. Last time with those calf raises, come up on the tippy toes. Slowly lower the heels back down, up on the tippies, and right back down. Let's start to feel the lower part of your leg warming up. It's going to be helpful when we go into more of the high intensity cardio moves. So squeezing the cheeks from the outside. Keeping those glutes engaged. Last five. Three. Two. And lower your heels, lower your hips. Okay, your knees into your chest. And we're just going to back and forth for a second, stretching out that low back. And then slowly sit up. Okay, so our first circuit is going to be, it's going to be, um, we're going to go through this one four times through. So we're going to do an alternating shoulder press and then a squat touchdown jump. So eventually if the jump starts to be too much, you can always just stay in the squat touchdown. We're going to have 30 seconds to work, for, uh, 15 seconds to rest, so I'll show you both. So for the alternating shoulder press, we're gonna start with the weights right at your shoulders. We're gonna make sure that they stay slightly hovering the whole time, that we're still engaging the tops. So we're gonna reach all the way up, bring it right back down, all the way up, right back down. And then after 30 seconds, rest for 15, then we're gonna go into squat, drop touchdowns, almost like you're grabbing something off the floor and then throwing it up in the air as you jump. So I always visualize the basketball and you're shooting hoops for 30 seconds. 
and then rest, and then we go back into the shoulder press. Easy peasy. We're gonna go through this one four times. Let's set up first for that alternating shoulder press. As you go through rounds, if you need to lower the weight or increase the weight, you can always change that out. Setting up this first round in three, two, and go. So we're gonna reach, be right back down to control, holding the belly button in tight. That's why we did a lot of oblique work in the beginning. This requires a lot of core stabilization as we press one side up to get the other side stable. Suddenly squeezing the butt cheeks to help protect that low back. Awesome. Last five seconds here, try to get a couple more on each side. Two, and rest. We're set those weights down. Setting up for that squat jump touchdown. In three, two, and go. So we're going to the floor, little hop at the top, right back down, hop at the top. If the hops are three too much, you know, let's just say a regular squat, but squeeze, and but squeeze. This helps us work out the shoulders. After that shoulder press, as well as get our heart rate up with the hops. Last 10. The nice part about today is 30 seconds, so let's move quicker. Three, two, and rest. Woo! And shake those legs out. I'm gonna grab those weights again. So if you're feeling comfortable in that shoulder press as we alternate, if you want to pick up the pace, we can always make it more of a seesaw. And 30 seconds, go. So if you feel okay going slow, so let's go a little bit quicker. Of course, the more reps you get in, the more your shoulders are gonna to start to burn. This will get challenging as we start to get out of breath. So make sure you can still control your movement, drawing the belly button in nice and tight. Last three, two, and rest. Woo. So here for this next set of jumps. Ready, and go. Reach it out, and hop. Do your best to sit back through the hips, keeping the chest above your hips. Awesome job, keep breathing. Last 10. And butt squeeze. Three, two, and rest. Woo. Grab water if you need it. We only have two more rounds of those. Deep breaths. You ready? And shoulder press. Just one at a time. Good control. You slightly look up a tiny bit. It will like help take some of the tension out of the back of your neck. Making sure we're still steadily squeezing those butt cheeks to protect the low back. Last 10 seconds here. See if we get two more on each side. Three, two, and rest. Awesome. And back in those jumps in three, two, and go. Sitting down nice and low, a little hop. Awesome. Keep breathing, inhale to lower. Exhale on that hop or that speed squat. Last 10. Three, two, and rest. Woo! Last round. Last time pushing through that shoulder burn. In three, two, and go. 
For our last round, try to make it our best round. Still reaching up with good control. Exhaling every time we press up. Inhale as you bring that dumbbell back down. Last 10. Keep breathing. We got three, two, and rest. Awesome. Then our last set of those squat jumps in three, two, and go. So there's a down and touch and reach it up. Let's squeeze. Awesome, you bought this. Last 20 seconds. Keep breathing, we got 10. Three, two, and rest. Woo. All right, shake your legs out. So this next one, if you have heavier weights, it might be a little bit easier um, with the heavier weight. Feel it out. So we're gonna do 30 seconds on each side. And then we're gonna do 30 seconds of our cardio. This one we're only gonna do three times through because they're single-sided. So for this first one, we're gonna set up a split stance. You're gonna bring your weight in the heel of the front foot. Try to keep that back leg nice and straight. Elbow's gonna go onto the knee of that front leg. Then we're gonna pull straight back. Straight back for a single arm row. After we do 30 seconds on that side, then we'll switch. Then our cardio move, we're gonna go into our one, two, three, highest bin. Nice and light in those toes. Working through the four, and then we're gonna go back to the rows. So set up first on whichever side you feel more balanced. 30 seconds on this one in three, Two and a row. You want to pull the back of that dumbbell towards your hip, elbow coming all the way back, opening up in the chest, keeping our gaze a couple feet in front of us. Make sure our head doesn't start to fall. Just imagine like you're starting a lawnmower in slow motion. I feel like every time we pull that shoulder blade back, we about three. Two, and switch sides. And bring that other leg forward. Opposite leg staying nice and straight. Up on that toe. Setting the side up in three, two, and row. And straight back, shoulder back, back of the dumbbell towards your hip. Really engaging the left and wrong way here. Keep breathing. Your dominant arm is always going to be way easier because that's the side you normally do things up with. You want to try to push through the brain on that less dominant side. And we got three, two, and rest. Perfect. We're going to make sure there's nothing on our side so we don't trip over anything. Setting up the left side, shuffle in three, two, and shuffle. Turn your three to the side, drive that knee up. One, two, three to the side, drive that knee up. Once you get that lateral motion down, so let's pick up the pace. Big exhale, every time we pull that knee up. Awesome, Keep breathing. Last three, two, and rest. Woo. We're gonna go back to that single arm row. We only have two more rounds of these. Setting up in that split position. In three, two, and row. Going straight back, twist the hip. The super touch should be a little bit nicer than the first one. That back leg light on that toe, weight in the heel of that front leg. Awesome, keep breathing, pulling that elbow up and back. Three, two, and rest. Let's switch 
switch it over to that other side. Bring the opposite leg forward. Bring to that other leg back. Lean the heel of that front leg. Turn this one in three, two, and go. Pull the straight back. Staying nice and light with that toe. As we pull the back of the dumbbell towards the hip. Really focusing on squeezing that shoulder blade back as we row. This is usually helpful for keeping the back nice and flat too. If we have trouble with the bent over row. Awesome, last five, three, two, and rest. Woo. Deep breath, and step back up through that side shuffle. In three, two, and go. Shuffle, 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 shuffle. Knee raise, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Head lay. Exhale every time you bring that leg up. Awesome, keep breathing. Less than 10 seconds left. See if we get to each side a couple more times. Three, two, and rest. Woo. Okay, we have one more set of that split stance row. Last 30 seconds on each side. Setting this one up in three, two, and go. Keeping the weight in that heel. Pulling straight back. Almost like we're pulling knees out of the ground. Making sure we're pulling that elbow down and back. Trying to engage our side and mid back and not the top of our shoulders and neck. Last five, three, two, and switch. Last time on the side, bring the weight in that heel, send that back leg, and row. Last 30 seconds here. Pull on the back of that dumbbell towards hip. Shoulder blade back and down. Awesome, keep breathing. Exhale every time you pull it back. Last few seconds here, see if we get three more in. And rest. Woo. And last set of that side shuffle, Heisman. In three, two, and go. One, two, three, shut me up. One, two, three, me up. Awesome, keep breathing. We're already halfway. Keep traveling through the sides. And we got three. Two and rest. Woo! You shake out your legs. I'm gonna show you this the next superset. This one we're going through four times because each one is only one move. So for our traveling plank, travel as far as as much room as you have. So I say do three one way and three the other. We're gonna set up in our high plank. Um, start with your hands together and your feet together. We're gonna step out to the side, same arm, same foot, same arm, same foot. Two. Three and one, two, three. Just going back and forth, doing our best not to rock. The rock will happen a little bit. Then our second exercise, we're going to set up for high knees. If it's too hard to bring the knees up too high, you can always stay more of a drop, or you can always slow it down for a march, whatever is going to be accessible for those 30 seconds. So let's set up first in that plank position, starting with hands all the way together. Feet all the way together in three, two, and step it to the side. Same arm, same foot. And bring it right back to the center. Same arm, same foot. Back to the center. Same arm, same foot. Back to the center. Our tendency is always to take a really big step with the foot. 
You want to make sure we're taking the same distance step with our hand in our foot. So we're going to start moving in a circle. Keeping the hips down, lower abs engaged. Last three, two, and rest. Woo. Then we're going to set up for our first 30 seconds of high knees in three, two, and go. So nice and light on those toes, pulling those knees up towards chest. If we ever need to slow it down, we always go into that march. Awesome, we're already halfway. Last 10, keep breathing. Now we got three, two, and rest. Woo! Give me a breath, grab water if you need it, and go back into that plank. And we got three, two, and go. Thumbs up to the side, right back in. This is really good for the back of the shoulders, especially as we take that step over. You want to focus on drawing that belly button in. If this starts to be too much for the movement, or it's too much on wrists, you can always hold the plank nice and still. Awesome, last five. Three, two, and rest. Ooh, we're gonna step back up for our hands. Second set here, and go. No, this makes us more of a jog if we need to. Breathing. Still drawing belly button in tight to help bring those knees up with control. Last 10. Three, two, and rest. Yay, we're already halfway done. Sitting up back in that plank. Take hands together, feet together. In three. Two and go. Just little baby steps to the side. Two, three, one, two, three, three. Breathing, holding that belly button in tight, nice little steps. Awesome, you got this. Last five. Two. And rest. Woo. Deep breath. Sitting back up for those high knees. In three, two, and go. Just like we're running down the street. Awesome. Keep breathing. Inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the mouth. Last 10. And we got three, two, and rest. Woo! Last set of the planks. Forever. Setting this one up in three, two, and go. Last time in the planks. You can always hold if we need to. Two, three, one, two, three. Woo, you got this. Last five seconds here. Three, two, and just. Woo. And we have one more set of those high knees. 
our last big cardio move. Give it all you've got. And go. Last 30 seconds here. Keep breathing. You can do it just like a commercial. Awesome, we're so close. Last 10. Keep using those arms. We got three, two, and rest. Woo! Get grab water. This last part we're gonna be on the floor. This isn't really cardio, so it's gonna be more of a nice cool down. So the first part we're gonna set up for our Superman rows. So I'm gonna have you lift all the way up. Into your Superman position. Once we're there, we're gonna pull the arms back, elbows towards our hips, extend back out, and then come back down, lifting all the way up, and then back down. Our second one, that's where you're gonna need your band. This one's gonna take a little bit of time to set up. I'll show you how to do it, but you won't have to do it till after we do the Supermans. So we're gonna put the band above your knees, and then once we're there, we're gonna roll it over onto all fours. We're gonna start on the right side. So you're bringing the back loop around your right heel. You need to keep your butt flexed the whole time. Otherwise the band will snap off and hit you in the back of the leg and it really hurts. So don't let it do that. Then once you're here, we're just gonna get straight back. Your knees should come right to the outside of that band. After it realigns, you must stay anchored around the front of your left thigh. We're gonna do 30 seconds on the right. And then we'll switch over 30 seconds on the left. And then after that, if you want, you can just leave it around both your legs for the Superman because it won't really mess up your Superman at all. So I set up first for that Superman, lift your row. 30 seconds here. And three, two, and go. I'm gonna lift all the way up, pull those shoulder blades back, stand back out, and then lower down. So it's not to be fast, you just want to make sure it's controlled. So we can squeeze the butt cheeks to lift those hips up. Really pull back through the lats as you bring the elbows back towards hips. You feel like you're pulling something down in towards you. Also keep breathing. Last three, two, and rest. Perfect. We're gonna push up on all fours. And once we have the band around those knees, we're gonna pull it back behind that heel. Really make sure you bend it around the middle of your foot. That way it won't slip off. Go to record, keep that foot flexed the whole time. Now once we have knees under hips, we're gonna press straight back through that heel. And then bring it right back in. Awesome. Straight up, inhale as we come in, exhale as we press. So we do our best to engage our glutes as we hit straight back. So think butt cheek, pressing back through the heel, butt cheek, butt cheek. Awesome, last 10. And we got three, two, and rest. Perfect. And bring that back around your knee. One inch to your foot. And we're gonna switch it over to the other side. If it gets twisted, that's okay. Really just to make sure that we're cracking our foot in line. It adds a little bit of resistance. Now we're gonna set this one up. 30 seconds in three, two, and go. We can treat that. Inhale and exhale. Keep that foot flex. Butt squeeze. Awesome. So exhale every time you keep back through that heel. Last five. Three. Two. And rest. We're going to bring that back around the knees. And set up for another set of those super hands.
Round two. And three. Two. And go. And we're going to lift. Roll back. Step back out. Come and lower down. Keep the cheeks tight. Pull back. And two. Perfect. We're so close. Last ten. Back to those elbows. But keep squeeze. Look at the next one. Maybe we get one more in here. And rest. Ooh. We're gonna go back into that kickback. Then back up with that hand. You're on the back of that heel. Oh, you have 30 seconds. In three.
low enough that we can stretch out your calf, but not too low that it slips off into the face. You are to pull that band in towards your chest, keeping your elbows at your side. Your best to keep that leg extended straight. You want to start out with the toe or the foot flexed. Bring your toe towards your face. And really doing our best to pull that knee in towards the chest, keeping that leg nice and straight. And then I want you to point your toe up from the sky. The more that you can point and pull at the same time, you should feel a nice stretch along the outside of the shin, possibly along the outside of your knee. Then I want you to get little circles going counterclockwise. Be able to circle the ankle at least five or six times. So now just switch the direction of your circle going clockwise. Then we're going to flex the toe again, pulling the toe towards face, getting that leg nice and straight. And then first I'm going to have you bring the leg over to the side, so the outside, holding with the same hand as the foot that's in the band. And you should feel a subtle stretch along your inner thigh, may not be super intense. And then if you're able to, try pointing your toe here, and that should intensify that stretch a little bit on that inner thigh. And one more big deep breath in here. And then on your next exhale, draw that leg back to the center. And then we're gonna switch holding with the opposite hand. And then we're gonna let that leg go over across your body. This one you'll feel a big stretch along the outer leg, possibly along the side and the back of your knee. You want to try to keep that foot flexed the whole time. Keep breathing. Inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the mouth. And bring that leg back to the center. Then we're going to bend that leg over your stable knee, crossing your legs almost like you're sitting in a chair. We're going to let the band go to the side. And we're going to lift up that stable leg, sticking one arm through that little hole in your legs, the other arm around the outside of your thigh, then pulling your knee in towards your chest. And we're here at some modified pigeon, so you should feel a nice stretch along the outer hip and butt cheek of the leg that's crossed. And do your best to keep your head resting on the ground. You tuck your chin under a little bit, you may even feel some of a stretch along your upper neck and upper back as well. One more big deep breath in here. Then release that leg across your butt leg. And then we're gonna do all of that on the other side. So to grab that band again, put it around the ball of that foot. These are good stretches to do after all the high intensity cardio. Our muscles will get really tightened and somewhat shocked. So it's good to stretch them out after. Pulling that band in towards your chest, elbows at your side, keep your foot flexed at first, doing your best to keep that leg nice and straight, bring the knee towards your chest. And then we're gonna point that toe up towards the sky, so pulling that band in. Then we're gonna get little circles in the ankle, just going clockwise to be able to get five or six in here. Then we're going to switch the direction of your circle, going counterclockwise. Stretching out and getting mobility in the ankle. Then we're going to flex that foot again, and then holding with the same side as the leg that's up. We're going to let that leg go to the outside, getting a nice stretch along the inner thigh. I'll usually throw my other arm out to the side and let my other knee fall outwards just to keep myself from falling over to the leg. And if the stretch is not too intense, you're trying to point that toe. You may feel a little more of a stretch along that adductor. Then one more deep breath in. And as you exhale, we're going to bring that leg back up to the middle. You're going to switch to the opposite hand. Bringing that leg across the body, keeping that foot flexed this time. And you should feel a stretch along the outside of that knee, possibly all the way in your calf. And 
just above your elbow to get a nice stretch in your shoulders, your lats. In the back of your shoulders might feel a little tight after all of the shoulder presses and the rows. And keeping our chin away from our chest to open up in the neck. I'm gonna switch over to the other side. Bring that other arm up above your head, pulling gently on that elbow. You should feel this all the way from tricep to shoulder. One more deep breath in here. Awesome. We're gonna take three giant deep breaths in as we pull it forward, relining the spine. So this first one, take a deep inhale as you bring the head down towards the ground. And exhale as we roll up one vertebra at a time. Stacking each one on top of the other, making our head the last thing to come up. Another big deep breath in. Inhale as we pull it forward. Exhale, roll up. Take your head again, the last thing to come up. The last big deep breath in, pull me forward. And then exhale, coming up from low back, to mid back. Awesome! You did so good. 30 seconds goes by fast, but it gets hard really quick. It does over and over again. Yeah. Good though. <laughs>